he's an intelligent, articulate man, and he cares a lot about Holden. But he also keeps calling Holden handsome. He says, you're headed for a great fall. You're going to have a great fall, and you have to have this. Uh, you could be a great writer and a great person, but you're going to have to get serious. You're going to have to read. You're going to have to think and observe. And you can't follow this self-destructive pattern that you have been following for a while. And Holden, who is exhausted in a kind of stupor, nevertheless is able to repeat. Now, you can say this is unbelievable. Uh, and maybe it is. Maybe it is. But maybe it's believable, too. Holden recalls <clears throat> the whole lecture verbatim. There's a good word for you, word by word. Is this believable to some people? Yes. I, I want to think literally it's not believable. Spiritu <clears throat> Spiritually it is. Okay, he wakes up, Holden wakes up, and he's horrified. Holden is horrified. Why? Holden is homophobic, um, and he's 16 years old, uh, and he can't get over it. He wants to get over it. This is Mr. Antolini, who's maybe a saint. But this handsome stuff, there is an ambiguity here that is, that is disturbing. In my own opinion, he's not gay. He is a man who loves Holden like a father, and he's looking for a son, and Holden is that son. Uh, it's not a sexual advance. Uh, and the handsome thing, I can accept that from a paternal point of view, that is uh, like a father to a son. A son he never has, he, he has never had, and never will have either. Uh, there is a tremendous pathos to this scene, a terrible pathos. And uh, Antolini is drunk, of course, uh, though he carries it well. And Holden scurries around and says, i got to go now. I'm sorry, I forgot I was supposed to meet a person or invents a lie. Uh, um, Mr. Antolini handles it with dignity. Um, and that too is disturbing because if, he, if it is sexual, then he would handle it in just that way, just that way, dignity. Uh, and the father, the paternal figure, would, would be more upset, I think. But the whole thing is very ambiguous. Um, Holden leaves, got to leave, got to leave. Horrified, spends the rest of the night in Grand Central Station. Oh my God, on the damn bench in Grand Central Station. The lad is exhausted. You can see what he's put his body through and his mind through. Look at these encounters, and I'm leaving many out. Uh, the contribution to the nun, his respect to the nun who was an English teacher, um, Holden is great. Ah. Now we come. I don't think I can do this. Um, if I get this upset at the earlier scenes, what's, uh, this is the single most moving scene ah, in any novel. This ranks for moving with uh, Antony and Cleopatra, Act 5. Uh, I know I can't tell this very well, and I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Here we go. Okay. Holden goes to visit, late at night, little sister Phoebe. Ah, Phoebe. Phoebe's the greatest character, the greatest child character in literature. Nothing close that I know of. I, she's... Ah, she's... She's innocent. She loves her brother. Uh, her reactions are so perfect. Just adorable. Nothing phony. Nothing phony. I, I don't see how anybody could find anything phony in Phoebe. Okay. Uh, Holden sneaks into the apartment. It's late at night, but the parents are out her reactions. You flunked out. I know you flunked out. Dad and Mom are going to be so upset. Oh, get away from me, you bad guy, you bad guy. But she doesn't mean it. And he knows it. Uh, and they talk. And they talk. 
and he says he's going to have to go somewhere far away, and he just wanted to see her and wish her a Merry Christmas and all of that. Uh, meet me one more time. Meet me at my school tomorrow. Tomorrow, maybe there's no school. Oh, right, vacation. Meet me at my school. The school is open. Okay, what time? 12 o'clock. Monday, 12 o'clock. Huge. Um, <clears throat> now, the, what I've left out so far is Ali. The memories of Ali. And here's where the story really breaks open. Allie standing out there in left field with his baseball glove, writing poems, or he has poems, famous poems, on the baseball glove that he reads because it's boring out there in left field. A couple of other Allie stories, too, and you don't need much to realize, oh, the three of them. <laughs> ah, the three of <laughs> Can you... Ah, can't even say their names. Okay, the three of them walking along, <laughs> talking, <laughs> holding, holding Allie and, and <laughs> Phoebe. Okay, but the key is, on the night when when Allie died, we get this in one, but in the middle of the book, and Holden says it reluctantly. I better say it now because I might lose it. At the very end of the book, the very end, we come to realize, and really it's kind of subtle, a, a reader could miss it, that this whole book is Holden's narrating the events of that weekend to a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Holden has had a mental breakdown, a physical and mental breakdown, and he's recovering in a sanatorium, we would say, in California. And D.B., his older brother, visits him often, comes out there in his sports car with his pretty girlfriend, uh, whatever. But Holden has had a breakdown, and we have to realize this. This whole thing is the story of a boy's collapse. <laughs> okay, so Holden's with Phoebe and they okay I'll meet you at the school at your school Phoebe tomorrow okay the rest of this I probably can't do it I mean it's just too much okay so uh, then he leaves she gives him money her Christmas money insists that he take it for his long trip where will he go maybe somewhere out west he mentioned this even to Sally. He even invited Sally to go with him, marry him. Uh, but she has some good sense. What? You're 16 years old. You have nothing. You can do nothing. I'll work. I'll provide for us. Don't be crazy. Uh, you're crazy. Get a grip. Get through school. Go to a college. Get an education and have a life. She, her reaction, very sane. Uh, very sane. No one can blame her. Phoebe's, though, is different. She's a little girl. So, then the following day, uh, first he goes to the Museum of Natural History, he sees some kids, his reactions to the kids, perfect, always perfect. Uh, then he goes to the school, he's early, maybe 11.30. He looks around at the school. He had attended that school, too, elementary school. And the terrible, he has one several places on stairways on the walls several places maybe but one place especially maybe only one place he sees the word the f word the bad f word you must know it it almost kills him because he can't stand the idea of these little children being exposed to that world to that word and that world because that word represents adult experience right there and it's kind of nasty. It's tainted. There's nothing very nice about it. Especially, there's nothing nice about that word. Uh, and it represents adult experience. Now, in the conversation with Phoebe the night before, he had told the story about what he wanted to be. What he wants to be is a catcher in the rye. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa.
too stupid. Okay, a field of rye. Children playing in the field. This is a, a poetic vision. <sighs> a field of rye. Doesn't matter what. Children, thousands of children playing in the field. He wants to stand on the edge of that field and save the children save the children from falling off. Falling off into what? Into the world of adulthood. <sighs> he wants to preserve innocence. He has seen enough of the adult world in this weekend alone to see what a terrible thing <laughs> can be a wonderful thing, but it's a terrible thing, thank you. What a terrible thing it is that children have to enter the more or less disgusting world of adulthood. Uh, and children are fascinated by it, of course, and you all want to enter it. You have the same feelings. You have a fear of it, you have a disgust for it, and you have a fascination for it. And in any case, it doesn't matter because you will enter it. Uh, and you will enter the, the F word and the drinking and the smoking and the prostitution and the lying and the phoniness and all that stuff that constitutes the adult world because that's what the adult world is. Does the adult world have any good to it? Some, some, but not much, not much. What of goodness can be pointed to is heroic, but not much. And it, you can see this is a very romantic book, an essentially romantic book, but great. Now, now for the most moving of all, oh God, God, God. So he goes outside and he and he waits. Oh my God, it's amazing. In the distance, he sees crossing the street, coming toward the school, and maybe even be that they're meeting at the museum. Maybe, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. It's near Central Park. That's important. On Fifth Avenue, in fact. It must be the Museum of Natural History. Anyway, uh, along here comes Phoebe. But two things. She's carrying a suitcase bigger than she can carry. Five minutes. Okay, we can do it if I don't break down. She's carrying a suitcase ah, bigger than she can carry. Why? Of course, she wants. She wants to go with him. She wants to go with him. I'm going to stare at Mona Lisa here, which is striking me as so absurd that it will save my sanity here. And the Bard. These pictures that lie behind Dr. Shin here. She wants to go with him. She wants to give up everything for him. Okay. <laughs> that sight. <laughs> okay. In a sense, that sight saves Holden. Because he realizes what an ass he is. He realizes how absurd he is. He realizes that he's got to get a grip, as we say. He's got to take control of his life. He can't go on floating around like this. Oh, I didn't finish the ah, the main thing earlier, the night when Ellie died. Holden had gone into the garage. They were living in a house at that time and had punched out all of the windows with his hand, cutting his hand terribly. He had to be hospitalized and his hand still does not function very well. <laughs> 